Hey everyone, Hannah here for Finance and Fun Stuff, and today I want to go over my top sets of 2023. As always, if you enjoyed these videos, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe as that really helps show your support for the channel. Where there is footage applicable, I will be putting footage after I finish talking about the sets. And without further ado, let's get right into it. The very first one I have here is Borgor Back-to-Back -back Level Up at Lost Lands this year. This was an absolute dream of a set to be able to go and see, to be able to see Borgor for, weirdly enough, the first time, considering how many times he's come to Syracuse, in this back-to-back -back with my favorite artist, and getting to hear Borgor's old, super trashy, trappy songs with level ups drops on top of them was just unbelievable. The vibes were great. And I even ended up going into the mosh pit immediately after this for Diesel, so you can imagine just how good of a time I was having during this set. show and that is slander at toronto this was at the history venue oh my gosh slander absolutely blew me away for this the production level was absolutely insane and getting to see them orchestrate a full story and incorporate all of their songs that i love so deeply into it was really powerful and moving in a way that i really did not expect i have only been able to see slander in festival type environments but now i understand why seeing a a slander tour is just such an incredible experience and i will be chasing that high to see them in a tour environment like that again so same show is actually William Black. So this was the direct support for Slander, which was one of the biggest reasons why I made that drive out to Toronto. William Black is one of my all-time favorite artists. I listen to his music all the time, and he really has the key to that really, really vibey, really emotional, melodic dubstep down, and I love listening to all of his music, and he absolutely did not disappoint during this. <laughs> sets from Moonrise Festival that Sage and I went to this year in Baltimore. The first of which is definitely going to be Above and Beyond. So I finally got to see Above and Beyond with Sage. They are an EDM group that Sage absolutely loves and they are somebody that we have wanted to see for so long. 
I got the pleasure of seeing them myself before Sage and I got together, but being able to see them with Sage was just really, really amazing. Getting to dance with her to so many of her favorite songs and being able to sing Sun and Moon at the very end for the encore and cry her eyes out was truly an unforgettable experience. And we will definitely be wanting to see Above and Beyond again as soon. <laughs> is Excision. Now, I've seen Excision a bunch of times. This is set 12, 14, something in that range. Depends on how many I've actually seen, because it's so hard to know with all the festivals I've gone to. Alas, this Excision set really stood out in my mind as my favorite Excision set in recent years. This really was up there with the throwback set that I saw in 2021 as one of my best Excision sets I've ever seen. Now, there was nothing entirely special about this set, but it was Excision at his absolute best, playing a lot of his stuff that I absolutely love, throwing it back a little, and getting to enjoy the environment of everybody else at this festival. And when Excision came on, I immediately jumped up and was ready to dance. And when he dropped G shit and everybody yelled it at the same time, it truly was a magical experience and made me feel connected to all the other ravers that were at that festival. And for that reason, Excision is definitely on this list for that setting. complete surprise as I was excited to see that Zomboy was on the lineup for Moonrise, but it was not somebody that I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see them, but I was passively excited to see them while I was there. But Zomboy's set absolutely blew me away. There were so many old drops in there, so many new songs, so many new drops. It really was a perfect set for exactly what I would have wanted out of that, and it made me fall in love with seeing his music live, and I'm so happy to be able to relive the days of when I first got into EDM through Zomboy's music and be able to do that on a live scale at Moonrise this year. Switching gears to something completely different, this is a house concert where we saw the mammals. Now, there is somebody local in the Buffalo area that puts on house concerts, and we were lucky enough to be able to see that they had the mammals playing there, and this is a band that Sage and I absolutely love, and so we were so happy to be able to see them together and I was absolutely blown away by their performance. Getting to see them in this really small, intimate setting really made everything so much better. But the singer in this band, she has an extremely beautiful voice and it honestly was one of the most beautiful and moving vocal performances that I have ever seen. And that says a lot coming from my experience with live music. So that was truly an unforgettable night and we will be chasing down the mammals anytime they come around Western New York. You could hear me now if you could hear me somehow. If you could hear the words that I'm thinking about a world on fire, your thoughts lost in the mire. And it seems like no next one is one I truly did not see coming this year, and that is 50 Cent at Darien Lake. I am so, so incredibly grateful that he decided to have this final lap tour, and Darien Lake Amphitheater was one of the places he decided to have his show, because it was so amazing to be able to see 50 Cent after all these years of listening to him as a child, 
and getting to experience this music and getting to experience that with friends also that really enjoyed his music and being able to see him for what is supposed to be his last tour was just a really memorable experience. And I will cherish that night for a very long time because getting to relive those songs that I hadn't heard in so many years, but I immediately knew every word to and I wanted to dance and shake my booty to was truly, truly Hannah jumping in here, realizing that I totally forgot about Dirty Heads this last year. I couldn't complete this best sets of 2023 without having Dirty Heads on here. I got to see that with one of my best friends in the entire world, James, and he actually introduced me to their music. And it was really, really great to be able to see them with him. And they played all the songs that you would hope that they would have played. And it was truly an awesome night at Riverworks. So I had to throw that one in here. Seven Lions at Buffalo River Works. So we got to Seven Lions extremely early. Like I'm talking three or four people back in the line, waiting it out a half hour, 45 minutes before they opened. Our idea was to go up top to get the best view of the stage. Unfortunately, they did not open the top, but that was actually fortunate for us because we decided to take a turn and go to the tables that were at the back on the raised platform. And this truly was, I think the best spot to watch a show at Riverworks, and I will try to get these, this spot again in the future, because being able to have somewhere to sit for both myself and Sage was really nice, but having your own personal little rail right there and having nobody in front of you was really, really awesome. Now, Seven Lions put on a perfect set here, and I cried so many times, and the lineup for this show really was kind of perfect, but getting to see Seven Lions after at the end of the show and getting to cry so many tears and sing all those songs was truly an unforgettable experience, and I'm so happy that he came to Buffalo this last week. at Buffalo Ironworks. Thumbasaurus is my friend Molly's, one of her favorite bands of all time, and I can definitely understand why after seeing them live. They have an extremely goofy, over-the-top sound, but I absolutely enjoyed it being there live, and being on the rail right in front really made it all that more enjoyable, and their music is something else to experience, and you have to see them if they happen to come around to your area. <laughs> Next up, we have So Tough, So Cute at Photo City Music Hall. This was an awesome one to get to finally cross off my list of artists that I want to see. And seeing them at Photo City, one of my all-time favorite venues, really just was the icing on the cake. 
it was great to get to hear all of their new songs that were really over the top and raunchy and getting to hear so many different things that I hadn't heard from them before, mixed in with so many common tracks that you had heard many times. They played things like the Black Parade and really just like played up the crowd really well and I found their crowd work was just unbelievable. So I left this show really feeling like it was an unforgettable night and I felt like it definitely had to be on this show. in Syracuse. Now this is a small local band local to uh, right near my hometown and I was so happy that they were going to be playing a show in Syracuse not only to be able to experience this band set but also to be able to see so many of my old friends from out there and to catch up with a dear old friend Heather was truly meaningful for that night. But I hadn't seen them play in a little while and I hadn't enjoyed their set the last time I had seen them but getting to see them in this different setting and at Funkin' Waffles, which is truly a great place to see a band, was truly awesome. And I absolutely fell in love with their music and, and at this live show in a way that I hadn't the first time I had seen them, but it made me just want to go back again and again. So I was really excited to be able to see them. And I can't wait till they are playing again in Syracuse for me to make the trip out there. But certainly not least, we have the color-based takeover at the Silent Disco at Lost Lands. Now, this was a truly unforgettable experience. I was scrolling on my phone late at night, and I happened to check out Skybreak's story, and I saw him post to go to the Grove to get there for the Silent Disco, because they would be on the green channel and be doing a whole color-based takeover with him and a bunch of other people. So, I immediately jumped out of bed, I was actually wearing my Skybreak t-shirt at the time, ran down to the Grove to listen to as much of the set as I could, and I was so thrilled that not only that set was incredible, but as soon as I walked up there, he immediately noticed the shirt that I was wearing and called me out for it, and he even met up with me the next day to be able to take a picture and to be able to sign my arm so I could get an autograph, and I was so incredibly happy to get that tattooed, as his music means so much to me. That truly was an amazing set, and I loved being able to see it in the silent disco format and to be able to rage when it was so weirdly eerily quiet at three in the morning. <laughs> Hey, Editor Hannah here. I thought it might be nice to have to end this video, a scrolling list of all of the shows that I went to this year that didn't quite make it into the very best of this year because I had so many gosh darn shows that I saw this last year and I couldn't include all of them in my absolute best, but they all were amazing in their own way. So I figured I would have those shows scroll up the screen right now as kind of a nice way to close out the video here. Thank you all so much for watching this recap of 2023 and what were my personal favorite sets from the year. As always, I would love to hear down in the comment section below about what your favorite sets are from the last year. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and do all of that as it really helps this video get out there to more people. And I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Thank you. Bye.